Hello, this is Jim, W4JBM. I wanted to have a, just a, a quick talk about uh, kind of a cool device that I came across on uh, Amazon and bought a few months ago and have enjoyed playing with a, a lot. Uh, it's a GM328. Uh, it's a, a component tester. It's called a semiconductor tester on some of the uh, uh, some of the descriptions. It's called an ESR meter uh, on others. Uh, when you order it, there's a couple of different uh, manufacturers that sell it. There's also uh, probably a dozen or so different variants that are similar, uh, different layouts and, and different circuit boards, but pretty much the same features, functionality, and, and versions of the firmware. Uh, what you get is just the this, this circuit board that, uh, that is shown here. And uh, when I got it, I went ahead and I, I just I cut a small piece of lumber and uh, mounted it uh, to that to give it a little bit of mechanical stability and also a place to, uh, to put the battery. And this, it can actually measure uh, outer circuit uh, capacitors, resistors, inductors, uh, a lot of different types of semiconductors. It is not perfect. Uh, there are things that uh, they can fool it. I had a, uh, a silicon controlled rectifier, just a small low power one that it identified as a, uh, a transistor and a couple other quirky things. Sometimes it'll see a, uh, a very low resistor or a very low inductance as a, uh, uh, a resistor instead of an inductor. Uh, but it costs uh, between $25 and $35 typically, and for what you pay for it, as long as you're, uh, you add a little bit of uh, uh, a brain power to it and, and don't just blindly accept the results, which you should never blindly accept results from any piece of test equipment, uh, it, it gives, you, uh, gives you some good insight into a lot of different things. So one of the things that I did with it that I thought was, uh, was kind of cool was, uh, it, and I actually wrote all this up, uh, there's a book out on Amazon, I'll put a, put a link uh, down in the, uh, the comment section. Uh, where I describe some of this, but um, it, it, I mean, you think about what this can do, you can put any kind of device in there or any kind of component, uh, you push the, the test button here and it will, within a few seconds, uh, come up with the, uh, the information related to that device. Again, it's not always perfect, but uh, you know, it's, uh, that's still pretty impressive that it can figure out whether it's a transistor, a diode, a resistor, a capacitor, an inductor, um, and, and then it can go ahead and characterize that device at the same time. And you can see that it shows the, uh, the, the, the numbers here uh, for the different pins. And the numbers uh, also appear down here on this zero insertion force uh, socket that you can use. And then there's also this, uh, this smaller area over here that um, you can uh, uh, man, mount another type of socket or some type of uh, clip leads or something like that if you want to. And then the only control is this push button here. There's just a single push button. Um, there are some different versions uh, of the firmware that can support things like rotary encoders and stuff like that. The, the history of the firmware is kind of interesting in itself. I talked some about that in the book. Uh, I don't really have time to go into it here. But what I've built here is uh, a Darlington pair. We, we hear a lot about Darlington pairs. Uh, some people view it uh, as something that's uh, it's going to be a power output stage or um, the, another place that I saw it used commonly for, for years. I used to run a repair shop. They worked on uh, Verifone credit card um, processing equipment and uh, the output on the printers that actually drove the, the, uh, the pins that did the printing uh, was a, a small Darlington pair uh, transistor in a, a similar plastic package about twice the height of uh, the normal uh, package or something like a 2N2222, 2222. Um, so this is these actually this is a pair of uh, 2222s that are uh, put into a uh, a Darlington pair configuration, and just uh, kind of refresh your memory or talk a little bit about it. Uh, basically, a Darlington pair is uh, it's two transistors. Uh, this the first one uh, is used to drive the second one. Sometimes this first one uh, is a small uh, like a plastic. Uh, just a normal uh, transistor, while the second one is a, a larger power transistor. It doesn't have to be that way, though. Uh, it's, it can be used in the NPN or PNP configuration. Um, and it, yeah, it, it, what, what it really does for you, and if you look at the, uh, the output over here, um, so it lets you, if I had a larger transistor down here, it would let me drive a larger power transistor, uh, which is one advantage. But the other thing that it, it looks to any, any circuit or any device, it looks like just another transistor. The only thing that you really see 
that says it's not just another transistor is up here. Uh, this is the v, v sub F, uh, the forward drop uh, on the base to emitter junction. It's 1.19 volts, so about twice what it would be for a single transistor. And then if you look at the beta or the gain, the current gain, uh, 32.5 uh, thousand uh, times the current gain. Uh, whereas a typical transistor is going to have more like 100 or 200 uh, transistor gain. So uh, the, the fact that it, it, it just it looks like another transistor to the circuit lets you use all the design tools, uh, the design approaches that you would use uh, for just a normal transistor design and put in something that can handle higher powers, um, has much higher amplification, uh, or whatever advantage you want out of it. Uh, so there's, there's actually, the, the Darlington pair um, has been around for a while and, and is very popular. Uh, there's also a thing called a uh, Sockley pair. And um, Sockley is, uh, if you notice, it's a, uh, it, it can be an NPN uh, driving a PNP final uh, instead of having both of the transistors uh, of the same type. Uh, in the Darlington pair, you sometimes find it used just by itself, uh, and other times you'll find a complementary pair where there's like a P an NPN pair and a PNP pair that are driving back and forth, uh, and something like maybe a, a stereo amplifier um, to, as a final output stage. Uh, the the Sockley pair, I, I've always seen it used in a complementary type of approach. Uh, and it also has the same characteristic that uh, you can uh, basically model it as a, uh, a single transistor instead of uh, two transistors. Now the advantage on the Darlington pair, uh, two, if you look at how transistors are actually constructed and a lot of the characteristics they have, uh, NPN transistors tend to, to be, have a little higher gain um, and, and a little lower uh, gate capacitance, a couple other uh, characteristics. Uh, that are a little better than your typical MPN. Even with, with matched pairs like the 2N3904, uh, which is an MPN transistor, and the 2N3906, which is the PMP, uh, the complementary transistor, the, the, it's not like the specs exactly line up uh, as you compare NPN to PNP. So um, that can cause problems sometimes. If you're using this in a, a, a complementary pair where you've got an NPN set and a, and a PNP set, uh, those differences can start to show up. Usually you can design it in a way to, to minimize that. Uh, but it, it is there and it's something that has to be taken into account. The Sockley pair, because you use like a, an NPN with a PNP and a PNP with an NPN, um, it, it kind of washes some of that out, and it's a little less uh, less sensitive to having matched devices. Um, and actually, one application that, that I've uh, worked on, and I'll be writing this up uh, before long, I'm working on a, a book about uh, linear power supplies, uh, and one of the projects in it is this uh, power supply splitter. And this power supply splitter, I can, I can take in, like, uh, say, 24 volts DC, and on the output, I'd have uh, basically a center tap and then a negative 12 volts and a positive 12 volts. So uh, I take the 24 in, I create this, this center, um, center voltage, basically divide the voltage exactly by two. Um, so I've got a split rail power supply like I need on uh, a lot of times with op amps and, and other types of devices of that sort. Um, if you look at the guts of this, um, and don't pay too much attention to the, uh, the homebrew uh, uh, cabinet that I've, I've put it in, but um, there actually is, uh, so there's a, an op amp here, um, it's just a 741 op amp that basically figures out where you stand, this is a voltage divider, and it tries to keep the, uh, the position of this uh, in sync with this, and this is set to be exactly a 50-50 voltage divider. So this outputs an error signal um, based on how far out of whack the, um, the center tap or ground connection uh, is uh, up there. And this op amp, it doesn't have enough power to drive. This thing can probably handle 750 milliamps, probably even an amp uh, intermittently. Uh, but this drives a Sockley pair, a uh, complementary Sockley pair uh, with a NPN and a PMP and a PNP and an NPN uh, to, to give you the, uh, that output uh, voltage and you can see the, basically I've got the leads coming in, feeds the one in, gets divided, the op amp creates an air signal, that air signal keeps the, uh, the center uh, portion of the voltage 
at the middle. Um, and then uh, you can also see here these little blue uh, devices are capacitors just to, to make sure that there's no RF noise or anything like that on the output. Um, so a very, um, very powerful concept, um, something like, that has been around a while. And also interesting how it ties back uh, again to the, the uh, uh, the confounded tester here where you just uh, again you know for this uh, the pair of 2N 2222s uh, and a, and a Dar or Darlington pair it looks just like a normal transistor base emitter collector just with a very high uh, current gain and a twice as high as normal uh, forward current drop across the uh, uh, across the base to emitter junction. So anyway, I, uh, I may put some other stuff together on the uh, LM328, but I did want to share that and talk a little bit about, uh, about some of the projects I have going on. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.